Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. We are out here in the strawberry patch this morning. We're gonna go ahead and fertilize them and I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a complete strawberry update. So you guys stay tuned for today's video. Alrighty, so I wanna go ahead and jump into fertilizing the strawberries and to just kind of break down the science for you guys a little bit. So on strawberries, you wanna go ahead and amend the soil before you go ahead and plant the strawberries before you make the raised beds. You want to put on about 70 to 80 pounds of nitrogen per acre and the things that strawberries need the most is nitrogen you know they need the potassium and phosphorus as well but nitrogen is what really gets that berry size to gets the berries to the full size and full maturity so you won't have itty bitty tiny berries and after you transplant your um your strawberries you know in the fall we went ahead and finished planting planting these i think the 28th or the 25th of September, so we went ahead and added on to the drip irrigation seven pounds of actual nitrogen to the acre. And since we have about, we have 10,000 plants out here, that is right about 0.6 of an acre. And whenever I say, you know, actual nitrogen to the acre, I'm, right now I'm fertilizing with the five, with the 1500. As you guys can see, it's 15.500, zero, zero, so that means there's 15% nitrogen zero percent potassium zero percent phosphorus in that bag and the way you calculate this is you put the fertilizer form in decimal form so we go went ahead and put 15.5 so it's 0.155 and then you multiply it by how heavy this bag is so the bag right now it is 50 pound bag so there is only about seven and a half of pounds of actual nitrogen in this bag even though it is a 50 pound bag of fertilizer all the other stuff or other elements to make your water soluble so whenever we say actual nitrogen you want to go ahead and calculate you know the amount of actual nitrogen inside the bag a lot of the guys that grow strawberries in the areas they in in this area they actually just use water soluble urea and urea is 4600 and you know if you have a 50 pound bag of of, of urea that's right about you know 24 pounds of nitrogen my bag here only has 15% or it's a 15.500 so it only has seven and a half pounds. So whenever you're buying your fertilizer, you want to go ahead and keep that in mind. My best bet for my dollar. So whenever we're fertilizing today, I'm putting about four and a half pounds of actual nitrogen on this patch right here. And uh, like like you guys know, it's my first year growing strawberries. So I'm, I'm kind of a rookie at this. I'm not, I'm not really sure what I'm doing exactly, but so far the plants are growing nicely. They have a lot of blossoms on them. We went ahead and uh, we. this is my fourth time irrigating since they went ahead and but, broke bud. But now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys our actual fertilizer system. So what I have here is a little redneck, but hey, it gets the job done. So as you guys know, we use a dosatron inside the high tunnels. But this fertilizer injector, I just grabbed it off of Amazon. And uh, it's just one of those flow through. So the water flows through here and it siphons the fertilizer through here and pumps it through there. And I went ahead and put on, I, I just got done measuring the, um, the four and a half pounds of fertilizer of the actual nitrogen in this bucket. I went ahead and mixed it up and turned on the irrigation. And since we've been getting a lot of water, a lot of rain, we don't need to irrigate the strawberries for the water. The only reason we're running through the drip is it's a faster way to get it to the plants and to get the fertilizer to them. So as you guys can see here, it's running through the fertilizer injector siphoning up the nitrogen through the filter and out to the header line all the way to the strawberries and as you can see here i have a leak here from the water i need one of those uh those uh hose gaskets i gotta go go, go in the shop and get one but for next time you know a lot of the guys who do strawberries they have a special room with all the fertilizer the injector with the pump and everything we're gonna have that in the, you know probably next year when we do the blackberries but for this year i gotta make it work and it, it gets it gets the job done so i'm not complaining and as long as the plants get the nitrogen to them they don't really care what you know how and where and what you're doing they just need that nitrogen to get that you know the vegetative growth and to keep the flowers going and keep them keep keep them coming out of that crown so as you guys can see here we have a little bit of a weed problem in between the rows i might have to come with the weed whacker real quick in between the rows here and clean them up but let's look at the plants here you know there's a little bit of grass growing here which is not too bad we'll come through and take care of that i want to go ahead and show you guys the plants 
right here as you can see here we already have some pollinated fruit which that's gonna i'm hoping that we don't get another frost and we still got a bunch of flowers popping out of here so like i mentioned before with the strawberries whenever you plant them in the fall you want to go ahead and grow that crown out during the fall so we went ahead and planted them like i mentioned september 28th ish and we went ahead and fertilized them heavy so you could develop that crown and you know there's three or four layers of crown you can develop so we're hoping to fully develop all the crowns and you know if you plant them too late in the season then you only have half of the crowns developing or half of the potential crowns developing and then you're not going to have a full harvest or if you plant them too early then you're then those crowns get developed too quickly and then you know they start flowering you know right before you're supposed to throw the row covers on them so you know this system you know with the plastic and everything it's been you've been used for many years a lot of research going on and we just kind of jumped on the bandwagon of doing it this way it's the most profitable and the most feasible way to do it but you know we went ahead and developed the crowns in the fall and whenever we took off the row covers they went ahead and started flowering so as i'm seeing here this side right here looks like it's um, a part of one crown and then the other side i mean you could fully have to dissect these uh, crowns to look at them exactly but just by looking at the flowers and stuff so as you see here, here there's a, still a lot of flower buds down inside the plant's going to pop up here so that's good as long as we feed them that nitrogen they're going to go ahead and keep growing and we have three or four blossoms on there and the first blossoms that come out of the strawberries are called the king blossom and as, as you guys can see here this king blossom right here it's going to be the biggest strawberry on this plant and then the smaller one the tertiary secondary and tertiary are going to still be big but they're not going to be as big as the other ones and let's look at some other plants here as well you know they all have a lot of blossoms on them a lot of set fruit so we're looking for a good I'm slipping here <laughs> We're looking for a good full strawberry harvest this year. And you know, the goal is to produce at least a pound per plant. You know, they say, you know, if you produce at least a half pint to a pint of berries per plant, then you go ahead and pay off your investment. And then after that, everything comes turned into a profit. So we're hoping to pick about a pound per plant. And so far, you know, they're gonna continue blooming here. I'm hoping for the next couple of weeks, maybe a month. And as the fruit starts ripening, they're gonna go ahead and continue blooming. And, um, no, we're gonna have a complete strawberry harvest. So one thing I wanna do is double check. I drove down here to the end of the rows and kind of tug on the drip case, see if they're actually leaking, see if the fertilizer is coming through. And as you can see here, these plants weren't covered up to about the first 20 or 30 feet. And these plants are a lot behind, a lot more behind than the other ones. But as you can see here, they're still coming on nicely. And we're gonna have a lot of strawberries this season. But just look at that king blossom right there, the king fruit. Take a closer look to that. It's gonna be, we're hoping for a full, full strawberry harvest. Uh, you know, it's my first year, like I keep mentioning, and to see how that works and if we're gonna do strawberries for next year. So it's uh, it's always exciting when you see a bunch of blooms out here, a bunch of blossoms, and just keep it going. And you know, just good, good thing to say on top of things, I had my brother Isaac, he came through and cleaned up all the rows for me. There was a lot of grass and stuff growing in between them. There still is. But you got to be careful keep the weeds managed in on top of the beds and in between the beds will come through and weed eat them or do something about that or just kind of step on them or something but as long as the plants are nice and clean and healthy and vigorous they're going to produce a good crop so the fertilizer is just come just finishing up here real quick and i want to be the first to say you know i've done a lot of rookie mistakes this year i've actually learned a lot see and that's the beauty of farming you know I knew a lot about strawberries going into it, but you know, I knew a lot of the science and not the actual theory of how to grow strawberries before we get started. But whenever you want to go ahead and apply it and actually start doing it, then you're like, okay, I see how this goes together with the theory and the practical things. And you know, there's a lot of things that you don't think about that can uh, set you back on the harvest. And um, as you can see here, the plants right here are very slim. They're not looking too good. And this is where the, um, the plastic came off. You no, know, during the uh, during the fall and you know we had a lot of I could tell the difference wherever the plants stayed intact and we didn't move them and the plants that got a little damaged from that plastic flapping around everywhere and you know I'm gonna go ahead and ex do a whole complete video on what I've learned in my first year growing strawberries but you know so far we're hoping for a good strawberry crop at least on what we have alive and what we are doing exactly out here so this is the way we fertilize our strawberries and get them ready to go 
we're gonna go ahead and continue finishing pruning here on the in the orchard and uh, we got to clean up block one when once we get that done planting but this is gonna be pretty much it for today a quick little strawberry plant update and if you guys haven't already go ahead hit that subscribe button smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever I do upload a video. I want to say thanks for watching up to this point. You guys have a good day. We will see you next time.